Have you ever wondered how a website like Planet Minecraft gets the server status of their Minecraft server on this website? Or maybe you have a website and you want to plug in your Minecraft server uh, like player count on there and your status and maybe even who the players are. It's very easy to do. I'll show you how to do it in JavaScript with no backend required because there's an API called MC API that does this for us. So I recommend using this Cinder guide uh, that I wrote up here. Uh, the link will be in the description and you can just follow along with the code uh, so you didn't get well, you know, caught in the weeds with a, an extra semicolon or something like that. And we'll be using the MC API, like I said. It's a free API that pings your server and then posts this as data on their website. Very cool stuff. So the first thing is we need some starter HTML because we're gonna reference, we're gonna change this stuff, right? And so this is my starter HTML. I'll pull it up in my uh, text editor, which I use VS Code, I love it. And here's the deal, I have a lot of styles in here, don't worry about it. There's gonna be source code in um, the actual uh, Cinder guide, but you know it doesn't matter if you have basic HTML here or if you have fancier HTML, right? We're worried about the JavaScript and changing it. Okay, let's keep going. We need to initialize a function. Okay, so uh, in the center guide, it says, okay, we need, a, we need to initialize a function that's going to take in the server IP and the server port. And that makes sense, right? So I want to hit my server. I'm going to pass in an IP and a port, okay? And this is, by the way, this is a random server, okay? And to make sure this is working, we're going to go ahead and console log it. So I'm going to close out that API, um, and I'm going to console log it. And so, boom, we're console logging it. It works, all right? Let's go back to my Visual Studio Code. And now, instead of console logging it, let's hit some kind of external data that will tell us information about the server. And that's where a fetch statement comes in. If you've never used fetch, um, it's basically just a, um, an API in JavaScript where you can fetch a URL that has data on it, and it's going to return back a data JSON object that you can read and ingest and use in your application. So we're going to ingest MC, uh, MC API's uh, status, okay? And what they're going to do is they're going to give us data about our server. And so we're going to construct a string based off of what they, um, sorry, based off of what information we pass to it, based off of the server IP and the server port, and we're going to hit that data. And so if you want to see what is actually happening under the hood, I refresh this. I inspect it, I go to console, and so this is the URL we're hitting. Well, guess what's happening? If I click on it, we have all this data. So if I literally send you this link, you will be able to read all this data, okay? But we want to parse this with our application, all right? So the way we're gonna do that is by going response, response.json, so we're saying JSON to JavaScript, please. And then we're gonna console log that data. So is it console logging? If I inspect console, yes, it's console logging in here all of the information we want the MOTD the player count all that stuff is here we just have to correctly interpret it let's keep going um, in the guide I do actually kind of show you a, a sample data so if you're interested in something say you want to know what the max player count is you can kind of follow this tree and find players dot max perfect so now we just have to set the HTML right we have all this HTML we want to update this this is statically typed if I put in zero zero in here um, this is still zero zero. So how do we update that? Well, let's write a quick function that's going to handle the data. Okay, so um, in my actual init server data, I will write a function that says handle server data. So I'll pay uh, tab that over. And what happens here? We're going to get the MOTD here. We're going to get the player counter here. We're going to get the logo here, and we're going to update its inner HTML or, in the case of the logo, its source. Okay, so we're going to change the actual physical image. And we have to not forget to actually call this function in our uh, success callback, right? So when we have the data, we're going to handle the data, and we're going to pass this data here. And this should, in theory, update the server there, right? So um, now we are literally updating MOTD, player count, and um, server icon. Perfect. The only thing left to do is update this IP up here and do some error handling. Error handling is easy. Um, because the API will tell us if there's an error, all we have to do is put a conditional statement in the top of our handle server status. Um, let's see. It's all fun and games until you can't copy and paste, right? Into our handle server status, and data.status is equal to equal to error. If that's the case, we're going to return false, and we're also going to console log the error. So if I mess up the IP address, or maybe the server's down, I will refresh this. I'll console log could not resolve the host. That's a very valid error. So we're going to get rid of that. If I refresh this, the only thing left to do is to actually update this top top level um, IP. Well, guess what? We don't need the IP from MC API. We are going to uh, pass that to our 
individual, uh, sorry, our function regardless um, offline. So we can just put that in at the top of our code. We're going to get the element by ID, the server ID right here, ID is equal to server IP and update its inner HTML. And we are done. It was easy as that. If you have any questions, check out um, the uh, Cinder guide, send me a comment. I will be sure to respond. And all the source code will be in here as well as this fancy CSS.